In this video, I'm going to make a simple control system with Embryo. First, let's look at the final product. I have an Arduino set up with an LED, a button, and a knob. When the button is clicked, the LED cycles through four different states, blink, fade, step, and off. Turning the knob controls the speed of the LED in each state. Start with a new project. I'll name it 3-State LED. I'm going to rename the default folder to LED Controls and rename the default agent to LED. This agent will encapsulate access to the LED and allow other agents in the control system to control its brightness. Using the right-click menu, I'll add a controller output node, which is used to send a value to a physical pin on the Arduino. On my Arduino, the LED is connected to pin 6. Values in Embryo are almost always on the range of 0 to 1, so when they interact with a physical pin, that number needs to be transformed. An LED needs a value between 0 and 255, so I'll change the max value from its default. Now that an output node is defined, I'll connect to the Arduino to see it in action. I select the COM port that the Arduino is connected to and click the connect button. While designing an Embryo, all of the processing happens on the computer. All the Arduino does is read and write values to the pins. When the design is complete, it is compiled and uploaded to run entirely on the Arduino. The connection program is now out of sync, so I press the refresh button and a new connection program is compiled and uploaded. When it is complete and it says there is a good connection, I can drag the activation value of the output node to control the LED brightness. Notice that an LED's brightness doesn't seem to change linearly. It looks like it gets bright really quickly and then changes slowly for the rest of its range. If we were to graph the voltage to perceived brightness, it would look something like this. Dealing with issues like this is fairly tricky when doing conventional coding, but with a visual programming environment it can be very easy. I'm going to use a Bezier curve node to transform the LED activation value in a way that offsets this effect. Now when I change the LED activation, the perceived brightness is more like what you'd expect. To finish the LED agent, I'll add a suppressed activation node and feed the suppressed activation value into the curve node. The activation node has two numeric inputs that other agents can connect to, activation and suppression. When the activation input goes up, so do the activation and suppressed activation outputs. When the suppression input value goes up, the suppressed activation value goes down. This way, other agents can turn off this agent. Now that the LED is encapsulated, I'll make another agent to encapsulate the blink state. First, drag the LED agent from the tree list onto the editing window to allow access to the LED. Add a switch node to keep track of the two states, on and off. When I click the toggle input switch, the output activation value changes between two states. By connecting that output activation to the LED's input activation, the switch now turns the LED on and off. Add a timer node to toggle the switch state. When a timer is triggered, its output value moves from 0 to 1 over a configurable and editable period of time. The default time is 1 second. Connect the finished output to the trigger input so the timer repeats itself. Add and connect a startup trigger node so that the timer starts when the Arduino is powered up. Now I connect the timer finished output to the switch's toggle input and the LED starts to blink. We need a way to turn the LED blink agent on or off. Add another suppressed activation node and this time check the clamp output checkbox. The, the LED blink agent can only really be on or off, so this clamps the suppressed activation output value to either 0 or 1. Connect the suppressed activation output to the LED activation input and change its blend mode from add to multiply. Now if the blink agent's activation input is above 0.5, the LED will blink. But if the activation is under 0.5, the LED input activation is squeezed down to zero by being multiplied with the suppressed activation, effectively turning off the blink LED state. Stopping or letting through an activation value by multiplying it by zero one like this is a very common pattern in Embryo. The LED blink agent is now complete. I'm going to copy most of it to use for the fade state. I'll change the end behavior of the timer node to return and connect its output directly to the LED input. 
Again, the fade state is turned on and off by the input activation value being above or below 0.5. The step state is very similar to the previous two. This time I'll use an incrementer node that is triggered by the timer. Every time the input trigger fires, the value of the input activation is added to the output activation. I'll set the input activation to about 0.25 so the incrementer makes four steps. Connect the already full output trigger to the, re to the reset input trigger to loop the incrementer. Connect the incrementer's output to the LED input activation to complete the agent. The three LED state agents are complete. Now I'll add another agent that cycles through them. First I'll drag the three LED state agents onto the editing window. Next, I'll add a multi-step node and click Add four times to create four states. The next input trigger moves to the next step, setting the corresponding output activation to 1 and firing its output trigger. Connect the done output to the reset input so that it goes back to the first step after the last. The first state will do nothing so that the LED starts off. The second step will be blink, the third fade, and the fourth step. Clicking the next trigger on the multi-step node now cycles through the LED states. I'll create a new folder and call it Inputs and make a new agent called Button. I add a controller input node, set it to listen to digital pin 3 where my button is plugged in, and check Use Pull Up Resistor. The program now needs to read from another pin so the connection program is out of sync. I click the Refresh button and a new program is uploaded. When I press the button, the controller output value goes to 1. I need to turn this activation value into a trigger. To do this, I use an above or below node. The is above and the is below activation outputs are either 0 or 1, and could be used to turn on or off other activations like we saw before. The go above trigger is the one we are interested in. It fires every time the button is pressed. Let's imagine we don't want the user to be able to click the button so fast. Add a timer node and connect the go above output trigger to its input. The timer cannot be started when it is already running, so no matter how fast I click the button, the timer's started trigger only fires when the button is pressed and the timer isn't already running. The cooldown period of one second is too long, so I'll adjust it by dragging the duration input. To finish the agent, I'll rename the timer's started output to clicked and make it available to other agents. Back on the LED state control agent, I drag the button onto the editor and connect its click trigger to the multi-step next trigger. Now clicking the button cycles through the LED states. The last thing to do is control the speed of the LED with a knob. I'll create a new agent in the inputs folder and call it knob. My potentiometer is connected to the Arduino on analog input 3. Refresh the connection program and the node updates with live data. I'll make the activation output external for use by other agents. I'll go back to the blink node. Remember this duration input on the timer. I'll drag the knob onto the editor and connect its value. Now turning the knob speeds up or slows down the blink rate. I'll do the same thing to the other two LED control agents. Now that the controller is done, I'll click on the Compile and Upload button. While designing the controller, all of the processing was happening on the computer. Now the finished controller is compiled to a C program, which is then compiled and uploaded onto the Arduino. I can now unplug the serial cable and power the Arduino with a battery, and it will execute the compiled program.